cut loose. I think I am. Yep, there we go. Set the wrench aside. Looks like we're all the way loose in the back. We're gonna have a couple of things under here. We have a transfer port. There we go. And in the tube, we have a breech seal. See our breech seal right there. Let me get in there. Looks like it's in very good shape. Looking in there, we can also see the valve. Valve looks like it's lined up reasonably well, particularly for one of these. These things don't have a, a screw in the valve, so the valve's really kind of floating almost. In my plastic valve repositioner. And when that fails, I use my brass valve repositioner because the valve itself, oops, that one's a little big, is made out of aluminum and is incredibly easy to mar. One thing that I found works really well, though, is an old bolt. So with our old bolt, there we go. Try to make sure our Oh, there we go. Very nice. Valve is centered. Very well. Just a little bit more, maybe. Okay. Much better. Much better. All right. That's one thing I wanted to check while I was in there. Another thing, when we were in here before, we went ahead and put a polished hammer and a polished sear in. We also put a washer in to eliminate any side-to-side -side play on the trigger. That helped a lot. I did not adjust the weight at all. So while I'm in here this time, the two thoughts that I had were A, wanting to make sure I got that thing in the right spot, and then B, thinking we go ahead and look at enlarging this port a little bit. I'll get out my micrometer and let's take a reading on that right now. Okay, as this is a budget build, we're keeping consistent with that. I would like to enlarge this transfer port just like, oh golly, a, a tenth of a millimeter few hundredths of a millimeter and get it to 0.357 when I was measuring it was a little under that so anyway I have an appropriately sized drill have the transfer port and a pair of pliers here and we're gonna see what we can do now originally I could not fit this drill through I had to turn and walk it through by hand a few times. So my thinking is if I slide her back and forth a couple of times, I can enlarge this as much as I need. Okay, looking good both ways. All right, I'm gonna mic it again, see where we are. Okay, that went super well. We are, well, we used, what was it? A 3.57 millimeter bit, which is also known as 964. And when I measured that now, we are 4.15 to 2 for most of that. So we've had a, bit of increase. I'm not going to port the barrel. I don't know that that's enough to deserve porting the barrel. So we're going to leave that as is, put this thing back together with the new hinge pin, pump her up, and see where we are right now. Ah, silly me. There is something else I'd wanted to do for this. And I get questions about these a lot. And the last time I used one, I had really good success, but it was actually a different bolt and a different gun. I get a lot of questions about extended bolts, and we are, I did have one made. This is about an eighth of an inch longer than standard. The standard Crossman bolt, let me get this one out of here, 
is has a nub that's an eighth of an inch long basically and the one that I've got here has a nub that's a quarter of an inch long. Benefit being it's able to push the pellet further into the barrel. And some folks say that increases power. Some folks say that increases accuracy. I don't know that I'm really strongly in either camp. You can see how it's going to set when we're done there. But um, I did want to go ahead and put it in here. It is a budget build. This is a budget component and one you can even make yourself if you get crafty and we may show you a way there. So anyway, we've got the custom bolt in there. We'll go ahead and work on reassembling this gun. First thing I'm gonna do is put together the pump system in the front end. So we'll set these aside for the moment. Okay, so in doing this, Piston assembly. Or did I not pull it out? Pulled it out. Cut this part where I look around my messy desk. For the piston assembly, there she goes. Also, pin. And she's right there. Alrighty. I think we have what we need now. That sight can sit. Okay, pump cup still looking fine. It'd be awful new to see any kind of wear on it. We just go ahead and uh, slip these together. With a lot of these pins, if they're not going easily, flip them over. Um, a lot of them uh, vary on one side or the other, and they've been pushed in before. So that end usually goes in easier than the one that was not pushed in. I need to um, actually use two hands here, not around the camera. Make sure I got that through there properly. Why aren't you lining up? Oh, I know why. Silly me. I grabbed a roll pin. Now look carefully, Al. There we go. That's a legit pivot pin. And that will drop right in. Yay! I don't know what I was thinking there. Long day. Okay, looks like we're good. The valve's already lined up. Let's hope that it'll stay lined up. Kind of ease that past the beginning there. All right. Now, since this gun's together, it's got a bit of air in it. I'm going to discharge that so that I'm not fighting against the pump as much. And the next thing we're going to do is simply set that in about, about where we want it to be. I don't know if I can get this up higher or not. Let's get this box out of the way. We don't need it anymore, so give me a second. Okay, now I should be able to see better. So, basically we're going to hold this down a little bit under a little bit of pressure. Reach up into the slot. To where we can see our hole. Ba dum ba dum. I'm gonna take our front piece here, slide it in there too. Trick lining up all the holes as best as we can. Those two are good. Pump tube's good. Hinge pin in hand. We start working them through and bang! Million times easier than using one of those roll pins. So let's go ahead and grab that clip and um, secure him. <laughs> 